Welcome. Here we have the fixed assets tab of the compass sheet model. At the top of the sheet, we have the brought forward figures from the opening balance sheet. And then lower down the model, we have any additions that we're making to fixed assets uh, for the three years. So looking at the top of the sheet, we have five different categories. Uh, in this case, land, fixtures, plant and machinery, motors, and intangibles. These headings um, have been set by what's in the opening balance sheet. So if you wanted to change any of those names, they're done on the opening balance sheet. So if you wanted to rename that to property or anything, that's done on the opening balance sheet. With these costs and depreciation, that again, um, the ones that are done in green, and that's highlighted there as well. Um, th those are done on the opening balance sheet. So the cost and depreciation that's brought forward, um, that's done from the other tab. The bits that you input on this tab are next to the blue. So this is the write off period. So as an example here, we've got land. So we originally bought that for £100,000. We've already written off £40,000 um, and we say we're going to write that land off over 10 years. That could be 20 years. If you notice when I change that figure there, it changes this percentage figure here. What we're doing with the write-off period, this is a working out, it's called the depreciation figure. So this is just um, the, the charge, the cost it puts through the accounts each year um, for when, when we're charging the cost of these um, different assets out. There's no cash impact of this. Um, so when we're looking at the cash flow, the, this won't appear on it. Um, so it's, it's purely just looking at a kind of a, a non-cash impact at this stage. Um, for the uh, accountants of the finance people, um, it's, it's known as a straight line method because you are writing that £100,000 off evenly each year. So you're writing the same amount off uh, each year. Uh, th there are different ways of doing it. There's one called a reducing balance method and everything else. Um, but, th but the idea of this compass sheet model is we're trying to keep things as simple as possible and not overcomplicate it. Um, if, you, if you know what you're doing, you, you, can, you know there are workarounds and you could set up two types of categories and try and get it as close as possible with a you know an older and newer um, asset additions and put different rates in for those if you wanted to get your depreciation charge as close as possible. But for, for the purposes of this video, trying to keep it as simple as possible and you put one rate over there, often that rate is put in your last set of accounts, last set of financial accounts if you want to get that out. Um, it, it's often in there in a the note. Um, and I say from a cash point of view, it, it, it doesn't really, it makes no difference at all anyway. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's putting that in there um, and we've put a little fail safe in there that it has to be a positive figure. So t typically it might be, you know, um, sort of five or, you know, typically five years um, for fixtures or plant machinery, five or ten years. So this line here is the only one that you need to put a, an input in and that feeds through to the profit and loss uh, and the balance sheet that doesn't have a cash impact. The boxes for the next three years are if you're buying any new items. So for instance, in March 21, we bought some new machinery for £25,000. You put that in there um, and that will feed through to the box below 
which you can't input in because that's got gray so any box with a blue header in you can import so we're going to buy twenty five thousand um, pounds and this is a cost excluding vat so this is when we're buying it not when we're paying for it um, if we go back to payment terms tab if you notice here there's a day to pay suppliers so the, the model now assumes we're going to pay it th pay for it 30 days later go back to fixed assets so we've put in there um, we're buying it in March the model will assume that we're paying for it in April go back to payment terms if we change that to zero that will now assume if we're buying it in March we'll pay for it in March if you're taking out loans um, to pay for it that's handled separately under the funding side this is purely about when we're paying the supplier for it so from a fixed assets point of view we're purely putting in when we're buying the uh, assets so that's for year one if we scroll down any assets that we're buying in year two put in the tab with the um, blue headers in and similarly with year three putting those in there's no um, facility we're not over complicating it by putting any disposals within there um, because you you know from a from an accounting point of view you work out what the depreciation that's been accumulated on those and taking that out that uh, and often when you're selling equipment it's, it's come to the end of its useful life anyway um, so it's just a bit of a, a, a bonus so uh, again we're not, we're not over complicated the model with that this is purely looking at um, new machinery or assets or buildings that you that you might be purchasing so um, and it all goes through um, you know, as per purchases within here and any funding for it is handled separately under the funding tab that we'll look at in a separate video so that's how we handle the fixed assets in the model